on stress and stress management. Not that we're under stress anymore. Because you're taking classes in the wellness center to reduce stress. And what you're finding out is exercise is one of the best ways to reduce stress. Now, I also have another handout. To, here we go. To understand what we're going to talk about today. Five strategies to reduce stress for students. Okay? And again, not that you all are under stress, but these are coping techniques. So when you are under stress, you've got the strategies to reduce them. Okay? And I'm so glad you guys came. All right. The first thing, guys, is we know stress does several things to the body. When you're in distress, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's dealing with finances, tests at school, trying to find a parking space, uh, trying to beat traffic, all these are our stresses. When we're in distress, the way we handle it and the way we cope with it will determine how successful we are in life. And there are simple strategies to negate the effects of stress. And you all are astute because you participate in some way in the wellness center. One of the first ways for the body to reduce stress is to exercise. Does anybody know why? Why does exercise reduce stress? What does it do to the biochemicals of the body to reduce that stress. Does anybody know? It, it helps to reduce the amount of cortisol in the body. Very good. And at the same time that it reduces that cortisol that raises blood pressure, that causes your heart to beat quickly, that increases anxiety, it also releases these feel-good chemicals from the brain and from the stomach. Does anybody know what that is? They're called beta endorphins. Beta endorphins. Now, when you engage in the first five minutes of exercise, whether it's in Coach Cruz's class, whether it's in Miss B's class, whether it's in Miss Green's class, or Coach Kareem, or any of our teachers' classes, within the first five minutes that you're participating in exercise, you start to relax. And the reason for that is those feel-good chemicals are kicking in. Those feel-good chemicals, they're called serotonin and dopamine. And they instantly have a relaxation effect on the body and mind. No matter your level of intensity, when you engage in physical activity or exercise, it starts to relax the body and mind by releasing those beta endorphins, serotonin, and dopamine. And it also helps the body to reduce that cortisol that increases anxiety, stress, and depression. Isn't that interesting? A lot of people don't realize that exercise is considered one of the major coping techniques in helping students of all ages to reduce stress. Also, the cortisol is not good for the heart either. That's exactly right, Ashley. Cortisol elevates blood pressure. It elevates the bad cholesterol that clogs the arteries. So Ashley is right, it's very bad for the heart. It increases the risk of heart disease. Exercise counteracts that. Isn't that interesting? And you kids are already doing that in the wellness center. I'm very proud of you. The second thing that helps the body deal with stress is nutrition. We now know without a doubt that eating healthy helps the body to handle stress. It helps the body to handle anxiety. It reduces the risk of disease, especially heart disease, thereby reducing our stress levels. Studies show that when we eat healthy, and we eat healthy in the gut, right? 
it has a very relaxation effect on the mind as well because serotonin is also released in the stomach. So eating healthy allows the body to release that serotonin just like exercise does in the gut as well. And it helps what is called the microbiome. It helps the gut to improve its function, to help us go to the bathroom more efficiently, to not have ulcers or ulcer pain or problems with the gut, like IBS, that's increased when we're under stress, that irritable bowel syndrome. Good nutrition and exercise negates that. Another coping technique that I like and we, we share in the Wellness Center is diaphragmatic breathing. And this is very simply done, and I want you to do it with me, where you put one hand on your stomach, and one hand on your chest, right here. Now normally when we breathe, we breathe shallow. We breathe right up to our chest. Diaphragmatic breathing is breathing all the way down into the belly. It's called belly breathing. So when you breathe in through the nose and mouth, bring that oxygen down to the belly and let it expand. Breathe in deep and then gently exhale. Now when you master that, you want to breathe in deep on a five count. So you're breathing in way deep into the belly, and then you're gently exhaling as well on a five count. That's called diaphragmatic breathing. Try, let's go. Breathe in deep, way down into the belly, and then gently exhale. Let that come all the way up nice. You can see it. When you breathe in deep into the belly, the belly expands. That means you're getting that oxygen way down in there. And then you gently exhale. That's called diaphragmatic breathing. You do that 20 times. And that also has an instant effect on relaxing the body and the mind. You know why? It releases the same chemicals that exercise does. That's why when you're doing Tai Chi with Coach Crew and you're doing that deep breathing with the moves, you start to relax instantly and very effectively. Well, sitting down in the chair with that diaphragmatic breathing will do the same thing. It will have that feel-good effect on the body and mind and it releases those feel-good chemicals that exercise does. Whether it's Tai Chi, or aerobics, or circuit training, diaphragmatic breathing can do the same thing. Now lastly, is time management. You know when you have a schedule of classes, you know what time you've got to be there. And sometimes if we're always late, we get in traffic and we don't put time for traffic, or we don't set the alarm and we get up late, we're rushing the class, that, that gets us stressed out. We can't find a parking space, that gets us stressed out. We're late for class, the teacher's not happy with you, your, your classmates look at you as you're disrupting their time in the classroom, that's all stressful. Time management can help us reduce that negative domino effect. If you get up 30 minutes earlier than you normally would and set the alarm for that, and if you know what time the traffic that you normally get caught in, if you beat that traffic 10 minutes earlier, if you plan that time, you're more able to get your parking space. You're not late running into the building to get to class. You see that you've got five minutes extra. You can easily relax getting into the classroom, all because you had a strategy to handle the time. Now, in the Wellness Center, I never see my students or our students coming late for class. I know you've managed that time well, and you plan accordingly. 
Never has any of the work studies ever been late. They come in sometimes 10 minutes early, 15 minutes early, and that's wonderful. They're in a good mood, they get something to eat and they have a beverage, and then they're ready to work. That's effective time management. And that's also a coping technique that sometimes we don't think about. But when we're late all the time, that has a cumulative effect on us as well in increasing that hormone cortisol that causes high blood pressure, heart disease, stress and anxiety. But when you plan for time, ahead of time, and you're not late, and the teacher's happy with you, that reduces stress right there and you go, that was well planned. So time management is also critical in how successful we are, not only in the classroom, but also in the workplace. It all carries over. Gentlemen, if you're late for your date, that also carries over. The woman's not going to be happy, right? The ladies have spent all that time getting ready for the date, and you come in an hour late. Isn't that stressful? Right? They're not going to be happy. Well, time management carries into relationships. It carries into the classroom. It carries into the workplace. And so if we learn to manage our time wisely, again, we're going to be more successful in life, whatever that is. So plan accordingly. And I'm not going to lie to you. When I get up earlier than I normally should for meetings, I get there on time. I'm not stressed out. But if I fudge a little bit and I sleep overtime, then I'm rushing in traffic and I'm going to be late and I'm stressed out. I'm not going to lie to you. So time management is critical for people of all ages in getting to where they have to be and not affecting our health in a negative way. I think those elements that I've underscored in that first page outline is very important for being successful in life. I got one more. You know, with social media and sometimes the hate speech that we hear on social media or you naively we may put up something that you enjoyed an event and you went to and you were proud to show your friends and then you get horrible hate speech back and it hurts your feelings and it tends to bring us down and we feel bad about ourselves and then we put ourselves in a, in a way that we, we badmouth our, our lives. We badmouth the way we look, the way we talk, the way we are in, our, in dealing with friends or dealing with classmates. And that has a negative cascading effect on how we feel about ourselves. And learning to see ourselves, learning to love ourselves for who we are, what we are, what we offer each other, what we offer in the workplace, what we offer to our classmates, what we offer to our family is very special. And sometimes that all gets lost in the drama of social media. And we forget to to see how we really are and, and what wonderful people we are. And so every morning, what we need to do, all of us, is to first thank the Supreme Being or the Good Lord or whoever you, you think about that we're alive, that we were able to get out of bed and able to do for ourselves. And then, Think of three things that we have gratitude for or appreciation of. Like every day, I always tell my students, thank you. You always hear me, thank you for doing this. Or thank you for being here. Or I tell my teachers, thank you for what they do for the students. I appreciate what they do on a daily basis. I have gratitude for what they do for the students and for this wellness program. 
And when you start looking at life with gratitude rather than negative doubt and negative self-talk, we start to look at things in a more positive light. Right. We start to look at ourselves in the mirror more positively. And if we could think of three things that we're grateful for about ourselves and about life every day, not only will you be a happier person and more appreciative of things around you, you'll find that your heart is lighter and that you're able to look at things differently with more of a positive attitude and that the burdens of life don't seem so stressful. But we have to love ourselves first. Yes. And the way we love ourselves is first of all, seeing the importance of exercise and what it does for our body and our mind and how it reduces stress. Find ways to eat healthy, to nourish that gut and to build the serotonin in a good way and to build our energy and stamina so we're able to continue to exercise and enjoy being active. Thirdly, we need to learn how to take time for ourselves, even if it's just two minutes out of the day, to calm our mind and body, to get rid of all the noise with that diaphragmatic breathing. It's very simple, you can do it, just don't do it driving. Yeah. But you can do it just sitting in, in your office or in the class, not the classroom when the teacher's teaching, but before class starts, or just sitting in your bedroom, or even in your home or your apartment, where you can block out the noise for two minutes, block out the social media, block out all cell phones, and for two minutes concentrate on that diaphragmatic belly breathing. Learn to be appreciative of your health and who you are and what you are and what you offer. And learn to be appreciative of others. These simple strategies, I really believe, not only give us strong coping techniques to deal with stress and anxiety that life gives us, but it also gives us the power to love ourselves, to have better health, so we're able to handle anything life delivers us. And I really believe that. I want to show you one other thing sitting in the chair that we can do that I didn't put on the handouts for you. And, it, and this is used by um, folks, um, clinicians, that work with men and women that come back from the military. Many of them have post-traumatic stress disorder. And besides recommending maybe certain medical intervention, they recommend, believe it or not, the diaphragmatic breathing. But I like this other thing. It's called guided imagery or visual imagery. It's a little bit advanced, but I think we can do it. OK? What we're going to do is we're going to put down everything that we have for a second. We're going to sit at the edge of the chair. We're going to put the hands above our knees. And I want you, first of all, to relax your shoulders. Just relax it. Close your eyes. And if we can do this, and Perfiri, if we could shut the door, uh, yeah, that would be wonderful. I appreciate it. So to get that, thank you, JB. We'll shut the door so they'll be quiet and calm. Thank you. So what I want you to do is first relax the shoulders, because that's where a lot of tension is during the course of the day. It seems to set, settle up there for being on the computers and being on our cell phones. Let's relax our shoulders. Now let's put our hands above the knees. Now with the diaphragmatic breathing that we did briefly, I want to see if you can take yourself to a beautiful place that you find will calm and will bring about beauty in your mind. So we're closing our eyes, and we're going to do that with diaphragmatic breathing. Where you take your place, and take you to that place that calms the body and mind. 
with your breathing. It could be the sound of a beautiful waterfall. It could be the crashing of the waves on the beach. It could be a lake surrounded by beautiful, majestic mountains. But whatever you see, take yourself to that beautiful place. And as you do that, as you go to this journey, I want you to start to breathe in deep into the belly and gently exhale. Now when you get there, I want you to see if you can hear the sounds of that beautiful place. Do you hear the sounds of that visual imagery with your breathing? As you hear the sounds, can you also see the beautiful colors of nature that surrounds that imagery? And you see the colors as you breathe in and as you gently exhale. <coughs> This is a bit more advanced. See if you can do this. As you do your diaphragmatic breathing, and as you hear the beautiful sounds of nature, and see the beautiful colors of nature, can you also smell the air? Does it feel fresh and clear? as you do that diaphragmatic breathing. Last part, can you feel the rays of the sun where you are on your back as it warms your neck as it warms your shoulders, as it warms the body. With the diaphragmatic <coughs> breathing, as you experience the nature, the colors, the sound, the smell, and the touch. With that diaphragmatic I'm going to count you back to the journey to the wellness center and five and four and three and two and one and open your eyes. And that's called visual imagery and it's really advanced and as you take your place to that beautiful spot, and everyone's spot of nature is different, you try not only to envision, but you try to bring in as many senses as you can with that breathing. It's called guided imagery, and it has a very relaxing effect on the body and mind. What are some of the key words you learned in this segment today? Quavis. <clears throat> Gratitude. Gratitude. Very good. Diaphragmatic Ash. breathing. Diaphragmatic breathing. Very good. Relaxing. Very good. Being stress-free. Being stress-free. Very good. 
very good. Managing stress. Coach. Endorphins. Endorphins. Miss Big. Exercise. Exercise. Jillian. Guided imagery. Very good. Guided imagery. Tisha. Time management. Time management. Did you find that this journey today would be helpful to other students and why? Why why do you think this this journey today would be helpful? Quavis. I think it's important to relax your mind throughout the day. Carry on between class, especially before class. You know, waking up in the morning. Waking up, you know, earlier than normal to try to get to the class you need to go to. So you won't be so overwhelmed. Very good point. Stressed out. So I think it's helpful. Very good, Quavis. Does college have its stressors? What are the, some of the stressors besides worrying about being late for class? What, what are some of the stresses you deal with as students in the course of a day that people can learn from? Sleep Ashley deprivation. Is a student. I'm sorry. Sleep deprivation. Not getting enough sleep. Right. Yeah. The, the assignment is too tough. Yeah. Worrying about the class. Academic stress. Yeah. Tough assignments. Right. Right. What else? People, um, through our college students get stressed. Sometimes we uh, struggle academically. You know, not studying, not studying enough that we need to study. You know. Need to study more. Right. Okay. <coughs> Teachers, uh, uh, taking tests. Like to, a lot of students have anxiety when they take a test. So when they they'll be prepared for the test, but then when the test get in front of them, they have anxiety breakdown. Right now that's a really good point. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Um, do you, and be honest with me, do you feel that some of these coping techniques would help with anxiety yes, before they take I the test? I definitely feel like that. You think that? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. 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 I'm taking a stretch management class, so um, some of the techniques that we did in today's class helps a lot. Do you, that, thank you, Quavis. Do you feel that, you know, some of the students may be listening to this on the video, do you think the classes we offer in the Wellness Center help students with stress? Yes, definitely. Yes, ma'am. Right, exactly. Because some of us, some of us, we don't, um, you know, we have a big schedule outside of school. I like mean, myself, I work outside of school, so when I do come to school, I, I work out pretty much well, three times a day almost. So it helps me a lot. And Quavis, you don't mind me sharing, you had a tragedy in your family last semester and um, and we talked about it and you said Dr. Murphy I, I need the time off and we said Quavis take all the time you need but you only took one semester and you came back because you felt Shelton and the classes here helped you with coping is that correct? Correct. And getting an education do you feel that has helped you with? Yes, I feel like it helped me cope, um, you know, it, it kept me you know, mixing it today also. So, um, you know, just being around, just being in the web and around the guy, being his friend, I was trying, was a big help. I mean, it was, it, was big, it, was, it was a big help to me, you know, coping. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to definitely feel as though I need to be banned. That, thank you for sharing that because other students may learn from that. Thank you, Quavis. Coach? Uh, I'm going to make a comment on what you said about the guided imagery and why, why that is so important. Um, I think in um, exercise, we, we, send, we tend to think of the upper echelon, the moderate and the vigorous type on one end of the spectrum. We tend to forget about the other end of the spectrum that's just as important. So um, if you had like zero intensity here, and then you had high intensity here. Back here is meditation, which is lower, the lowest form of consciousness, of intensity, that you need just as much as the high intensity. You, you, and, and as Americans, uh, due to our lifestyle, we, we forget that we have to recover. recover. Recovery is just as important as exercise. Things like guided imagery and other things like that, uh, even are just the, the restful parts of the day that we so very much need.
you're right, because we go at such a fast pace with social media, with our cell phones, with our classes, working uh, part-time or full-time, being around family. You're so right, Coach. We need to take that time where we can relax the body and mind and, and give that as a gift to ourselves. And do you, do you, thank you, Coach, for sharing that. Do you feel that some of the classes we offer in the Wellness Center help to relax that body and mind yes, as well? Yeah. Of course. Yes, what, what would be a good class that we offer in the Wellness Center that relaxes the body yeah, pretty and mind? Much. Personal fitness. Everything. Definitely with the, yeah. I mean, exercise, you know, that's, that's yeah, everything that's pretty much. Uh, so, what are some of the classes, Quavis, that the students can take uh, that are listening today that they could take that will relax their body and mind no matter the intensity? Um, uh, more definitely Tai Chi. You like Tai Chi? Personal fitness. Personal fitness. Even uh, even aerobics. Aerobics Slim and you, gymnastics. And what else do you like to do often? I see you in that room in there. I like to lift. Lift weights, lift weights. right? Weight training and general conditioning. Yeah. Because students will learn from other students better sometimes than they learn from the teachers. So you sharing that is very important. Um, let me ask you this. Uh, I believe in financial wellness as well, in preparing you guys, not only to take classes that reduce stress and are wonderful electives, but do you feel that some of the job opportunities um, in the health and fitness industry uh, students can get uh, a certificate here to be um, marketable in the mm -hmm. fitness industry. Do you do you feel that that we have opportunities for students? What what is equipment that you're taking that's landing you jobs in the fitness industry? Uh, my um, when I transferred, my major was in physical education, okay. law enforcement. But um, you know, also you know, I like to work out, and I'm big on the fitness world, so. Uh, personal training, uh, maybe on um, strength and conditioning coaching also. You know, also, um, you know, the wellness uh, the certificate also helps you when you do train for a better zoom, you know, it goes towards your uh, whether it's whether it's uh, social science, I mean not social science, sorry, but uh, uh science. Kinesiology, you can you can you can kinesiology you degree, that's exercise, right. Exercise science, right. physical therapy, everything you know, that goes towards that. So it's helpful <coughs> also. So the wellness certificate that you're in, you feel not only will help you get a job as a personal trainer, you feel it will help you to transfer to a four-year college in also, kinesiology. You know, you know, it looks great on, you know, great on everything. Resume, you know, it's, it's a big help. It's a big help to, you know, I advise students to try. Very good. Very good, Quavis. I know you do. You're, you're a good ambassador for the wellness program. Um, what? What are the classes in the wellness program that you you benefited from as students here in other ways that, that has improved your quality of life? Um, personal health. Personal health. Yeah. Why why personal health? Because uh, you know, you know, growing up growing up we are we are able to eat what we think is best for us and our health. But um, you know, learning the things, you know, learn learning the things of personal health. At a young age, everybody don't think about their health. You know, they don't go to things that like that. But you know, you see your peers, you see people once you go through health issues, they big issues of health. So personal fitness helps you, you know, consume certain foods and it helps you. It makes you want to work out more. It makes you want to watch what you type of food you consume. So by you taking that class in personal health, you learn the importance of good nutrition uh, for improving your overall performance, not only stress management, but uh, prevention of disease. Very good. Very good, Quavis. Also, uh, go ahead, healthy Ashley. cooking. Oh, yes. Tell us about healthy cooking, why you like that. You learn what portion size is. You learn what you put in the food and what you don't put in the food when you're cooking it. Because so many people used to cook Taste. Right. They didn't think about, hey, I'm putting butter or margarine, what, what that's going to do to their arteries. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Uh, and Miss Morrow teaches healthy cooking. What is it about healthy cooking that the students like besides learning about portion size 
and how to cook properly. What do you think is one of the popular? Yes. They get to eat, right? <laughs> they get to eat the food until they enjoy it. That's right. Healthy cooking, and Miss Mara does a very good job with that. Um, so you guys are saying to the students out there, take exercise classes here, not only to reduce stress, but to... Everyday life. Yeah. I think you should put it in your everyday life. You know, I think, I think that, uh, if you got time, I think you should take time out to, you know, get to a walk. You know, it don't have to be nothing, you know, high, but you know, get to a mile, get to a walk, you know, something that helps you throughout the day. Exercise. And and how are the teachers in the wellness center? They're pretty nice. They're great. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty great. good. Yeah. yeah, that that helps to reduce stress too. And it's not a, the, the classes aren't difficult. It's the, so they they're designed to reduce stress, educate, inform, have fun, and to meet other students. Do you feel that the socialization of the wellness center also is a um, good coping technique? And why? Because I didn't address it. Jillian, why do you think socialization is important in the wellness center? I mean, you've hung out here and you're helping. Well, it's much easier to make friends in the wellness center. Than the rest of Shelton State. Most of the people I've met at Shelton State have come. That's, 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 that's nice. Cool. Also, you know, like, like I was saying, um, you know, when I went through um, the past with my father, you know, I had you all to, to talk to. Him. I had you all to talk to. Him. We had to cope with him outside of, you know, I know if I if I go home, you know, I had that. But also, I know I can come to school and get comfort. Also, I can cope with it. So, you know, the social skills are great. As well as, you know, so you, you find that having friends and not being isolated is a coping technique, especially when you were dealing with your tragedy. Okay, very good. What, what else does socialization, what has it done for you in the wellness center, Chiquela? I think it just, like, it helps, it helps you talk to more people That's very good. Do you feel that talking to people that that are your age group or close to age group, does that reduce stress that you have a confidant or a friend that you can confide in as well as your teachers? I think that's an important coping technique as well. Absolutely. I want to ask you this. Do you feel that we, we use social media too often in our cell phones that we don't know how to communicate, but the wellness center has a place for you all to communicate effectively? Do you feel that you practice communication skills in here as well? I mean, I, I don't really use social media. I don't use Facebook at all. Wow, quite so, the you know, some problem. Yeah. I mean, you know, like when, I, when I get here, I'm, you know, I can say I'm at home. Very good. Jillian, does it get you out of your comfort zone to put aside the computer and the the telephone to, you know, your cell phone to talk to students? Does that? Well, it's better to talk to people in person because if you're talking to them over the phone, you could yeah. misinterpret something really right. easily. Good point. Yeah. 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 Well yeah. taken, really Jillian. Point for no reason. That, that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. And then it lends itself, sometimes I see a negative domino effect where yeah. People use that hating speech to each other, and that well, we don't have that in the wellness center. I have to say much, that much easier to be hateful online because there's no consequences. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> That's right. But also with online, what you put online is there forever. There is no taking it back. Yeah. Right. That's so true. I think it's great to get a better understanding. You know, to converse face to face. Yes. To understand. You're right. Because a lot of people misinterpret. They don't, they don't consider, you know, other people business. Right. So my um, thing is it's uh, important that you get there, that you feel uh, social life, that you think, you know, without taking anything out of context. Exactly. No, and that's important to do that. You know, a lot of, I'm always so proud of Shelton students because they, they're much wiser than they think they are. Right. And, and they spend time, I really see, spend time learning, uh, about each other, talking to each other. They see the benefit of social media, but they're not hooked on it like I see other students hooked on. Uh, Tisha? I think also a socialization in here also helped 
the students become more mature when they go out and to leave uh, shelves and then transfer to other colleges that universities will see that they are professional and right. and you know they'll look at their background okay what school did you come from and that gets Shelton a good reputation because they will see that okay well well you took well in the classes and they help prepare you for this right. and so you can get a job a lot faster if you got a good reputation and they taught you you know the benefits right. of it so and that will look good on the resume well, that's true because I think that uh, more hands-on like, yeah it's not like well, it's not safe well, be safe with this you know, you just try to learn on your own. Right. So we uh, actually learn, you know, actually hands on. Yeah, you know, right. exactly. Actually do it with you. Show That's you right. how to do it. So, so do you feel that the wellness center also, uh, besides the academic classes and, and the socialization, do you feel that it's a laboratory where it prepares you for the workplace in the health and fitness industry? Yes. And yes. that you overall is very good. Well, thank you. Uh, this has been a wonderful group. It's been as informative to me as I hope it was to you all. And I appreciate I, I appreciate Porfirio uh, taking the video and, and sharing it with other students because what students have to say to other students to me is more powerful than sometimes what teachers can can share. So thank you, Porfirio, for doing that. And we'll thank Ms. Nequina for, for allowing the time today. Any other questions or comments on the handouts? Do you find them helpful to underscore? If you want to look at them real quick, do you think these handouts today underscore the, the message, the concepts we talked about? Most definitely. Yes, ma'am. Okay, very good. Well, class dismissed. Make sure you sign the roll and I thank you for being here. Thank you.